Does the Bible support slavery? Many people who don't understand the Bible will argue that it does. Before we begin this review, here's another conversation we must revisit. Just because something bad is in the Bible doesn't mean God approves of it. The Bible is God's story of how people can be bought back from sin. He makes no attempt to hide the sin of people in its pages. For example, Cain, Moses, and King David committed murder. Does God approve of murder? No. Cain did not turn from the evil in his life, but Moses and King David turned from their sin and were forgiven. The sins that people did in the Bible are there for us to read about and learn from the consequences. Another thing we must consider is that what we think we know may not be what the Bible is talking about. Remember that the Bible contains Jewish history and customs, most of which are not explained inside its pages. Because of American history, we know about harsh slavery where people were kidnapped from their homes, forced to work for others, and they were brutally treated. We had a civil war and spent many years struggling to establish equal rights for all people groups and women. But some of us may not know that the Greek and Hebrew words for slave have a different meaning. The Bible describes two kinds of slavery, the enslavement of an individual who was forced to work without pay and a servant or bond servant who was paid. An example of enslavement without pay is found in Exodus chapter 1. A particular Pharaoh rose to power and begins to oppress the Israelites living in Egypt. The Israelite nation endured 400 years of harsh slavery until God called Moses to deliver them. An example of the servant or bondservant, which in Hebrew and Greek is also called a slave, can be found in Colossians chapter 4 verse 1. Here, God is giving instructions through the Apostle Paul on how masters should treat their servants. This is where people become confused. God is giving instructions on how to treat slaves. Because of this, there are people who think God approves of slavery. But the slave in Colossians chapter 4 verse 1 is a paid worker. In Exodus chapter 21, we encounter the first type of bankruptcy law. Imagine a person who has lost himself in so much debt, the only thing he has left is his ability to work. He volunteers to sell himself to the person he owes money or to someone who can help in this situation. God told Moses that this person can only be in the bond servant position for six years. The person works, earns a wage, his debt is repaid, and he has a place to stay and on-the-job training. At the end of six years, he is automatically set free, but he has the option to stay. This arrangement is not harsh slavery. This is a person in financial trouble taking responsibility for what they have done. However, people are sinful and masters can still be mean. That is why God gave us Colossians chapter 4 verse 1. Speaking of screaming bosses, there's one other verse that people seem to have a problem with, and that is Exodus chapter 21 verses 20 and 21. And that says, Anyone who beats their male or female slave with a rod must be punished if the slave dies as a direct result but they are not to be punished if the slave recovers after a day or two since the slave is their property. Some people are shocked when they read this verse because the master is punished if the slave dies, but there's no punishment mentioned for the harsh beating. The punishment for the master is there in verse 21, but depending on your translation of the Bible, it might be hiding or implied. In order to make sense of this, we need to back up and take a look at the verses that are around verses 20 through 21. First of all, chapter 21 begins by talking about buying a Hebrew servant. This lets us know that verses 20 and 21 are talking about a servant or a bond servant, not someone who has been kidnapped against their will. 
from verse 12 and through the rest of the chapter, these verses deal with people becoming angry with each other, getting into fights, or people doing things that cause injuries to others. Each verse begins with a situation and ends with how the victim will be compensated or how the person who caused the injury will be punished. Because of the surrounding verses, we can safely assume that the master in verses 20 and 21 has become unreasonable and his punishment is in verse 21, which says, but they, that's the masters, are not to be punished if the slave recovers after a day or two since the slave is their property. The literal translation for property is money, so that sentence should end with, since the slave is their money. If a master is dumb enough to beat his servants until they can't work, they can't make him money or do the jobs that he hired them to do. That is the master's punishment. Ephesians chapter 6 talks about serving the Lord wholeheartedly, and in verse 9 it says, And masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven, and there is no favoritism with him. In the Old Testament, after Job lost everything, he sheds light on God's expectations of masters and servants. In chapter 31, verses 13 through 14, Job says, If I have denied justice to any of my servants, whether male or female, when they have a grievance against me, what will I do when God confronts me? What will I answer when called to account? In the Old Testament and the New Testament, there are verses that teach us God will hold us accountable for how we treat each other, no matter what position we are in. If God approved of harsh slavery, he wouldn't have given any laws about it. God doesn't give laws to regulate and limit good things. He gives laws to regulate and limit bad things. God cares about how people are treated, so he gave commands for each situation involving slaves, whether a person was in financial trouble or they were kidnapped and forced into slavery. Exodus chapter 21 verse 16 says, Anyone who kidnaps someone is to be put to death, whether the victim has been sold or is still in the kidnapper's possession. God does not approve of harsh slavery, and the penalty for slave traders in the Old Testament was death. Slave traders were also listed among the worst of sinners in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10. Hopefully this helps you understand the difference between harsh slavery and the Greek and Hebrew term for slave, which is talking about the servant or the bondservant. Let's bring this discussion to a close with one more form of slavery that appears in the Bible, and that is spiritual slavery. Romans chapter 6, verses 20 through 23 says, When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things resulted in death, but now you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God. The benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. These verses are explaining that a person who has not trusted and accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior is a slave to sin. Those that have accepted Christ as Savior are set free from sin, and like the bondservant, Followers of Christ have a new master, and he is God.